Hello, my name is Dr. Ramon Rodriguez, and I am a board-certified neurologist in Orlando, Florida, and I specialize in the treatment of people with neurodegenerative disorders, including Alzheimer's disease. And today I have an important update on Alzheimer's, and I believe this information is going to be useful for people that have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and also it will be uh, important and uh, interesting for those that are caregivers for people suffering from this condition. So, Let's go ahead and begin. What just happened, and what just happened is that earlier today, on January 6, 2023, the FDA approved a new treatment for Alzheimer's disease, and the name of the medicine that was approved is Lecanemab, which will be marketed under the name of Lecanbi. And this medicine is type of medicine known as a monoclonal antibody that can modify the progression of Alzheimer's disease. And this is very important because for the first time in history, now we have a medication that has shown that it could modify the progression of Alzheimer's disease. The previous medicines that we had available were symptomatic medications, something that will try to make the symptoms better. However, they were not changing what was happening of the brain of the people with this condition. So how is it that this medicine works? Well, we believe that this medicine can neutralize and eliminate beta amyloid, which is the protein believed to underline the origin, the uh, development of Alzheimer's disease. And the rationale is that if we can eliminate this toxic protein from the brain, then we can modify it or slow down the progression of Alzheimer's disease. How do we know that the medicine works? Well, the pivotal study, which is the Clarity AD study, where 1,795 people participated in the study. And this is a study that was done in North America, Europe, and Asia. This is very important because in first place, there is a large number of people participating. In second place, there are multiple ethnic backgrounds, right? And there are more than 200 investigation sites that participated in the study. So this is not a study that was done only in one location. This was a, a massive effort from many investigators in these places to uh, test the drug, find the, uh, the, the right patient for the study, and do the proper assessments. People that participated in the study received the medication twice per week, and the duration of the study was 18 months. So when a person was included in the study, they were receiving the medication for a period of 18 months. So what did we learn in the study? So we learned that the people that received lecanemab did better than those who received placebo. And the scale that was used to measure this is the clinical dimension rating scale sum of boxes. And this scale can measure the progression of Alzheimer's during those early stages. This is something that is actually quite difficult. And this seems to be one of the best tools that we have available to measure this. Also, there was a decreased burden of amyloid deposition in the PET imaging studies in those receiving lecanemab and also demonstrated an improvement in activities of daily living in the group that was receiving the active medication. So, who will benefit from this treatment? Well, in the study, only people with mild cognitive impairment and early Alzheimer's disease were evaluated and allowed to participate. And unfortunately, the drug was not tested in people with advanced Alzheimer's disease. However, this is critical to know because it shows the importance of early screening for memory problems. So now when a person uh, uh, begins to notice or family members begin to notice that they're having some cognitive issues, some memory problems, then at that time will be the right time just to have the proper evaluation to see if in fact what is happening in Alzheimer's disease and then uh, being able to begin a treatment like this. The, probably the most common question is, is it safe? Are there any side effects to these medicines? So this is what has been published. The most common adverse events observed in the study include infusion site reactions, headaches, and area. And um, going deeper into this, well, you know, we all know what headaches are, so I don't need to go uh, deep into that. However, when we speak about infusion site reactions, we're talking about adverse event that happens while the people were receiving the medication, and examples of these reactions include flu-like symptoms, nausea, vomiting, among others. And then ARIA. What is ARIA? So ARIA stands for Amyloid-Related Imaging Abnormalities. So 
what is this? So these are abnormalities that are seen in the uh, MRI scan. And, and also we can observe clinically in this population. And those abnormalities might result in small brain bleeds. Uh, some of these people might show with uh, headaches, dizziness, changes in vision, convulsions, and brain swelling, among others. So uh, it is for this reason that I recommend that a person will establish themselves with a team that understand how to monitor for these adverse events and will be able to know what to do, what was the protocol that was followed if any of these adverse events were found. Is this medication available now? So while the product might be available very soon, this is a process that requires coordination, especially with insurance companies, right? You know, we know that um, it's not uncommon that when a new medication comes into the market, they, they are typically more expensive. So we need to figure out the coverage. Um, there has to be efficient protocols. There has to be training of healthcare personnel and how to monitor for these uh, side effects or the adverse events that might be observed uh, with this medication. The other component is there has to be a massive effort of educating the community to, number one, understand who is going to be the right patient to uh, get this medication. And, and we need to educate the patients about the potential benefits and the side effects, and in the same manner, caregivers and other family members. Also, the other thing that we need to understand is what is going to be the cost. And at this time, I, I personally do not know what is going to be the final cost annually for this medication. So what should I do if I want to know more about this treatment? So the first thing that you need to do is, if you're having memory problems, you need to have the proper evaluation with your doctor, right? Not every person with memory problems is developing Alzheimer's disease. So the proper assessment needs to be done. In second place is that if your doctor is suspecting that you have Alzheimer's disease, then there has to be a confirmation of the diagnosis. So uh, back in the day, and we're talking just a, a year or two ago, uh, the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease was mostly based on clinical grounds on the evaluation of the patient. But now we have some uh, laboratory testing and imaging tests that could help diagnose uh, Alzheimer's disease properly. Also, we need to understand the possible adverse events of this medicine. This is something that you need to discuss at that risk with your doctor and your family. And, and I recommend that if you want to know what is happening, uh, our clinic is planning to be providing updates continuously uh, about this uh, product as well as others and, and other research studies on our Facebook page, which is Neurology One, and also on our Instagram page, which is uh, uh, Neurology underscore One, or at The Brain Dog, which is my, my personal um, Instagram page. We also have a, a website, a web page, www neurology1.net, and you might be able to access uh, these resources where we plan to be providing updated information about these uh, new medicines and the future treatments and direction in Alzheimer's disease. We hope that you find this information to be useful, and please do not hesitate to reach out to our clinic in our webpage, once again, www.neurology1.net. Or we have an email at info at neurology1.net. Thank you.